This video covers the CKY algorithm. I'll provide an overview and then discuss how to convert context-free grammars to Chomsky normal form, which is a requirement in the CKY algorithm. After that, I'll move towards a deeper discussion of the algorithm itself, followed by a case example. The CKY algorithm is one of the earliest algorithms for constituency parsing. It's a data-driven, bottom-up approach, and it's a dynamic programming algorithm. The standard version of CKY, which is the version we'll be covering in this course, expects CFGs to be provided in a format called Chomsky Normal Form. Chomsky Normal Form restricts production rules so that they can only produce either two non-terminals or one terminal node. Fortunately, any CFG that isn't already in Chomsky Normal Form can easily be converted to that format without any changes to the set of strings that the grammar accepts. When we convert from a non-CNF grammar to Chomsky normal form, there are three situations we need to address. First, we need to handle cases where the production rule mixes terminals and non-terminals on the right-hand side, because Chomsky normal form doesn't allow it. There must either be exactly two non-terminals or exactly one terminal node. Second, we need to address cases where the production rule has a single non-terminal on the right-hand side, because again, Chomsky normal form doesn't allow it. Non-terminals need to be in pairs. And third, we need to address cases where the production rule has more than two non-terminals on the right-hand side, because as we've seen, there need to be exactly two non-terminals. So to address situation number one, we can just introduce a dummy non-terminal variable that would have its own production rule in which it would accept a single terminal node matching the one occurring in the original rule. To address situation number two, we can replace the non-terminals with the production rules to which they eventually lead. In many cases, this would lead directly to a single terminal node, or in some cases it might lead to a new production rule that could then be handled accordingly. And to address situation number three, we can introduce new non-terminals that allow us to split production rules into multiple rules. And this means that if we had an original context-free grammar like the one you see on the left here, you can convert its first three production rules to something like what you see on the right. Once we have our grammar in Chomsky normal form, we can be assured that every non-terminal node in our parse tree, until we get to the point where we're assigning part of speech tags, will have exactly two children. This means that we can encode our tree using a two-dimensional matrix. With that matrix, we'll really only be concerned with half of it, the upper triangular part. Each cell in the matrix will contain the set of non-terminals that represent constituents spanning positions i through j of the input, with the final parts residing in the top right corner. When filling cells, we'll consider that for each constituent belonging to a given cell at position i, j, there must be some point at which it can be split into two parts. The first part would need to lie to the left of the cell somewhere along the same row, and the second part would need to lie beneath the cell somewhere in the same column. To fill the table, we just start from the metaphorical bottom, so the cells along the diagonal, and move our way up, so we're filling a cell based on the parts that have already been filled before it. I'll illustrate this more concretely with an example because it can be difficult to visualize on theoretical terms. So let's say we have the sentence, book the flight through Chicago. We have our context-free grammar, and then we have our lexicon as well. We'll start off with our matrix completely empty, and only the upper triangular half is shown here since that's the part we're interested in. The first thing we need to do is convert our grammar to Chomsky normal form. So we go ahead and do that, and now we can go ahead and begin filling in our table. We start with the first row and first column, which just represents the single word span book. It looks like we can match that in our lexicon as a noun or a verb. And next we'll move forward. So remember we're working from the bottom up, so we're moving onwards along the diagonal. So our next cell will represent the single word span the. We'll check our lexicon and find a match as a determiner. We'll move onwards to the next cell, representing the single word span flight, and find a match as a noun. We'll find a match as a preposition for the word through. And finally, for the single word span Chicago, we'll find a match as a proper noun. So we filled in our entire diagonal now, 
So we have one or more part of speech labels for each word. It might be the case though that there are entire constituents that span only one word. So now that we have these part of speech labels, we'll quickly check back through and see if that's the case. It turns out it actually is. For the first word book, we find that a noun is also automatically a nominal due to our CNF conversion. We also find that a verb is automatically a verb phrase, which is automatically a full sentence as well. This means that flight is also a nominal. And finally, it looks like proper nouns are also automatically noun phrases. So now we've also found all the single word constituents and we can finally move to two word constituents. To figure out whether book the is a constituent, we need to determine whether there are any production rules that would match noun, verb, sentence, nominal, or verb phrase, followed by a determiner. It doesn't look like there are, so book the must not be a valid constituent. And then we'll check the flight. So we're looking for a determiner followed by a noun or nominal. We do find a match here, a noun phrase. Now we're looking at flight through. So we want a noun or a nominal followed by a preposition, but it doesn't look like we find a match. And finally, we'll check through Chicago. So we want a preposition followed by a proper noun or noun phrase. And we do find a match there, a prepositional phrase. And next we'll move on to three word constituents. We'll start with book the flight. So we could look for either a noun, verb, sentence, nominal, or verb phrase, followed by a noun phrase, or the impossible case of nothing followed by a noun or nominal. We find that a sentence matches the verb phrase, and a verb phrase matches the combination of verb followed by noun phrase. We'll move onward to the flight through. So we're looking for either a determiner followed by nothing, or a noun phrase followed by a preposition. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there are any matches for either of those. We'll move on to flight through Chicago. So we're looking for a noun or a nominal followed by a prepositional phrase or nothing followed by a proper noun or a noun phrase. And we find that a nominal is a match. So we'll move onward to forward constituents now. We'll start off by looking for a noun, verb, sentence, nominal, or verb phrase followed by nothing, so an impossible case, or nothing followed by nothing, another impossible case, or a sentence or verb phrase followed by a preposition. We don't find any matches, so book the flight through isn't a valid constituent. We'll try the flight through Chicago next. So we'll look for a determiner followed by a nominal, or a noun phrase followed by a prepositional phrase, or an impossible case of nothing followed by a proper noun or noun phrase, we find that a noun phrase is a match. So at long last, we've finally made it. For the full constituent, book the flight through Chicago, we're looking for a noun, verb, sentence, nominal, or verb phrase, followed by a noun phrase, or the impossible case of nothing followed by a nominal, or a sentence or verb phrase followed by a prepositional phrase, or the impossible case of nothing followed by a proper noun or noun phrase. We find two matches, a sentence or a verb phrase. And technically, since we already know that a verb phrase can directly map to a sentence, that means we reach the sentence node in two different ways. So that means we could return two different grammatically correct parses for the sentence. So we made it all the way through our CKY case example. In the example we just worked with, we were focusing on recognizing whether the sentence fit into the specified grammar. So all we really wanted at the end was to know whether S was in the top right cell. If we instead wanted to return all of the possible parses, we would make two little changes. First, we'd add back pointers, just like we've seen in other dynamic programming algorithms. So we could see from where each non-terminal was derived. And then we'd also permit multiple versions of the same non-terminal to be entered into the table for cases when it was reached in multiple different ways. Once we made those changes, we could just choose one of our potentially multiple S's from the top right cell and recursively retrieve its component constituents from the table. 
In the case of the example we were working with, that would look like this. CKY does have a fairly high time and space complexity. However, overall, it's a nice, simple, dynamic programming approach to find constituency parses according to a specified grammar.